Welcome to College Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. SA the most affordable state for beachside living as pandemic-sparked urban exodus continues. Campus Notes, January 21, 2024. A century later, is it finally time to bury Lenin's corpse? New long COVID study uncovers high inflammation in patients as Senate calls for more research on crisis. The Koizumi Premiership. Haruhiko Kuroda, 19. SA the most affordable state for beachside living as pandemic-sparked urban exodus continues. ABC. Siduna, a remote town on the Nullarbor in South Australia, has become an attractive destination for city leavers due to its affordability and laid-back lifestyle. According to housing analyst CoreLogic Australia, Siduna is the second most affordable beachside suburb in Australia, with a median house price of $254,275. The town has seen an increase in population as people seek a change of pace and job opportunities. However, housing is in short supply, and the rental market is tight. Siduna has been identified as a key area in need of housing solutions. Campus Notes, January 21, 2024. Yahoo! Nate Brady of Birdsboro has earned a bachelor's degree in marketing from Grove City College. A century later, is it finally time to bury Lenin's corpse? South China Morning Post. The embalmed body of Russian revolutionary leader Vladimir Lenin continues to attract tourists to Moscow's Red Square, 100 years after his death. Lenin's body is preserved in a crystal sarcophagus and is embalmed every two years at a secret cost of millions of rubles. Visitors are quickly ushered out of the room to prevent them from examining the body too closely. Despite many Russians supporting the idea of burying Lenin, the Russian Orthodox Church, President Vladimir Putin and many others believe that his body should be preserved as part of Russian history. New long COVID study uncovers high inflammation in patients as Senate calls for more research on crisis. Yahoo! A new study in science is shining a light on the continuing impact of long COVID, with research revealing further and continuing health concerns for some of the 16 million sufferers in the US long COVID is a syndrome, or collection of symptoms, that continue or develop after an acute COVID-19 infection and can last weeks, months or years. There is no test to confirm if symptoms are related to long COVID. Some scientists suggest that long COVID is caused by overactive immune cells, but the exact cause remains unclear. The Koizumi Premiership, Haruhiko Kuroda, 19. Nikkei Asia. Former Bank of Japan, BOJ, Governor Haruhiko Kuroda has argued the country's central bank did not do enough to end deflation in the 2000s. Kuroda said he suggested measures to then-Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi to help raise inflation, including the purchase of long-term government bonds and stocks, but his advice was not followed. He said he believes the BOJ's decision to prematurely end its quantitative easing program in 2006 led to a resurgence of deflation when the global financial crisis hit in 2008. Kuroda, who stepped down as BOJ governor in April, was speaking in a speech at the University of Tokyo. Exclusive Malaysia set to appoint PNB chief to lead country's biggest pension fund sources. Yahoo! Ahmad Zulkarnanan, CEO of Malaysia's largest asset manager, Permodelan Nasional Berhad, PNB, is expected to be named head of the country's biggest state pension fund, according to three people familiar with the matter. The appointment is expected to be announced later this month. Anwar Ibrahim, the Prime Minister, named Amir Hamza Azizan the previous CEO of the Employees Provident Fund, EPF, as second finance minister in December 2021. The EPF is the world's 12th largest pension fund and is looking to rebuild its reserves following a record withdrawal of subscriber funds during the COVID-19 pandemic. Senate Judiciary OKs bill clarifying powers of state school superintendent for third year in a row. Yahoo! The Senate Judiciary Committee has passed a bill that would give power to the state school superintendent. Versions of the bill have previously passed the Senate in 2022 and 2023 but died in the House. The bill aims to put in state code an issue already made law by the state Supreme Court in a case syllabus point. The court said substantial deference must be given to a superintendent's interpretation of a law or state BOE rule. Murray scores 21, Flanagan has double-double and Ole Miss routes Arkansas 77-51. Associated Press. Mississippi defeated Arkansas 77-51 in a college basketball game on Wednesday night. Jalen Murray scored 21 points for Ole Miss, while Alan Flanagan had a double-double with 10 points and 11 rebounds. Matthew Morell added 18 points for Ole Mississippi Arkansas struggled shooting, making only 33% of their field goal attempts and missing 17 of their 22 three-point attempts. Ole Miss opened the game with a 12-2 run and held a 36-28 lead at halftime. 
they extended their lead in the second half and cruised to victory. Arkansas hosts No. 6 Kentucky in their next game, while Ole Miss plays at Texas A&M. Thursday's time schedule. Associated Press. The article provides a schedule of various NBA, NHL, and college basketball games taking place on Thursday, January 25. The listed games include matchups between the Philadelphia 76ers and Indiana Pacers, Utah Jazz and Washington Wizards, Boston Celtics and Miami Heat, and Chicago Bulls and LA Lakers. In addition, there are NHL games between the Arizona Coyotes and Tampa Bay Lightning, Boston Bruins and Ottawa Senators, and New York Islanders and Montreal Canadiens. The article also lists various college basketball games, including the ninth-ranked Arizona Wildcats against Oregon State and the top-ranked South Carolina Gamecocks against the ninth-ranked LSU Tigers. Plashkey, Chargers hiring of Jim Harbaugh is a bolt of brilliance. Yahoo! The Chargers hired Michigan's national championship coach Wednesday in a high-priced move that should pay huge dividends in landscape shaking and image changing. Texas teen birth rate rose for first time in 15 years after abortion ban, largely affecting Latinas. Yahoo! The fertility rate for teens in Texas rose for the first time in 15 years in 2022, a shift driven by disproportionately high rates among Hispanic teens in the year after a six-week state abortion ban took effect, according to a University of Houston study. Japan says slim spacecraft's pinpoint moon landing is success. The Globe and Mail. Japan has successfully achieved a pinpoint moon landing, making it the fifth country to put a spacecraft on the moon. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, announced that its probe, SLIM, landed within 100 meters of its target. JAXA also received all data about the landing before the probe lost power. However, SLIM's solar panels have been unable to generate electricity, possibly due to being angled incorrectly. JAXA hopes that a change in the sunlight's direction will power up the panels again. Vancouver Council approves policy statement for Indigenous-led Jericho lands housing proposal. CBC. The Vancouver City Council has approved a policy statement for an Indigenous-led mixed-use development project on the Jericho lands. The proposal includes a large housing project, community centers, parkland, and wilderness spaces. If the Millennium Line is extended to the University of British Columbia, a Skitran station could also be included. The project is set to be built over 30 years and would more than double the population of the upscale West Point Grey neighborhood. The project is being developed by the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waddath First Nations in partnership with the Canada Lands Company. Approximately 20% of the housing will be set aside for social housing. The policy statement was praised by BC Housing Minister Ravi Colon and advocacy group Abundant Housing Vancouver. However, the Jericho Coalition, a group of Point Grey residents, has expressed opposition to the proposal. Arkansas falls to 1-5 in SEC play with big loss at Ole Miss. Yahoo! The University of Mississippi, Ole Miss, defeated the Arkansas Razorbacks in a dominant 77-51 win. The loss marks the Razorbacks' fifth loss in six conference games, putting their chances of an at-large bid in the NCAA tournament in jeopardy. The Razorbacks were out-rebounded by 15 and had 14 turnovers in the game. Ole Miss basketball steamrolls Arkansas, stays unbeaten at home under Chris Beard. Yahoo! Ole Miss basketball forward Jamin Brakefield formed an imaginary cradle with his arms after he finished through contact along the baseline. The Rebels snapped a two-game losing streak with a 77-51 victory over the Razorbacks on Wednesday at the SJB Pavilion. And they have Brakefield's performance at the game's decisive moment to thank. Dear viewers. I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Degrees world. Today, I bring you a mix of news stories from around the globe, from the most affordable beachside living in South Australia to the ongoing debate over the burial of Lenin's corpse in Russia. We'll also take a look at the latest research on long COVID, the reminiscence of former Bank of Japan Governor Haruhiko Kuroda, and the appointment of a new head for Malaysia's largest state pension fund. Starting off, we have an interesting piece of news from South Australia. Sijuna, a remote town on the Nullarbor, has become a popular destination for city dwellers looking for an affordable and laid-back lifestyle. With a median house price of $254,275, Sijuna is the second most affordable beachside suburb in Australia. However, the town is facing a shortage of housing, highlighting the need for solutions to accommodate the influx of new residents. Moving on to Russia, we have the ongoing debate over the burial of Vladimir Lenin's embalmed body. Despite many Russians supporting the idea of burying Lenin, the Russian Orthodox Church, President Putin, and others believe that his body should be preserved as part of Russian history. 
The crystal sarcophagus containing Lenin's body continues to attract tourists to Moscow's Red Square, 100 years after his death. Shifting our focus to health, a new study in science sheds light on the continuing impact of long COVID. With no test available to confirm if symptoms are related to long COVID, researchers are still trying to understand the exact cause of the syndrome. Some scientists suggest that overactive immune cells may be responsible, but more research is needed to fully understand this crisis. In Japan, former Bank of Japan Governor Haruhiko Kuroda reflects on the central bank's efforts to combat deflation in the 2000s. Kuroda believes that the premature end of the quantitative easing program in 2006 contributed to the resurgence of deflation during the global financial crisis. His remarks offer an interesting perspective on the challenges faced by central banks in managing inflation and deflation. Moving to Malaysia, the country is set to appoint a new head for its largest state pension fund. Ahmad Zulkarnanan, CEO of Permodelan Nasional Berhad, is expected to lead the fund. Malaysia's pension fund is looking to rebuild its reserves following a record withdrawal of subscriber funds during the COVID-19 pandemic. In the United States, the Senate Judiciary Committee has passed a bill clarifying the powers of the state school superintendent. This bill aims to put into state code an issue already made law by the state Supreme Court. The legislation will likely spark further debate as it moves through the legislative process. In sports news, the University of Mississippi's basketball team, Ole Miss, secured a dominant victory over the Arkansas Razorbacks. The win keeps Ole Miss unbeaten at home under coach Chris Beard and puts the Razorbacks' chances of making the NCAA tournament at risk. Lastly, we have news from Vancouver, where the city council has approved a policy statement for an indigenous-led mixed-use development project on the Jericho lands. This project, developed by Indigenous First Nations in partnership with the Canada Lands Company, aims to provide housing, community centres, and parkland. The policy statement has received praise from the BC Housing Minister and advocacy groups, although there is opposition from some residents. That's all for today's news roundup. As always, I encourage you to share your thoughts and questions. What are your thoughts on the affordable beachside living in South Australia? Do you think Lennon's body should be buried or preserved? How do you feel about the ongoing research on long COVID? Let's keep the discussion going. Until next time, this is Dr. Six signing off. Stay curious and keep exploring the Six Degrees world. Note, the news articles used for this broadcast are for reference purposes only and do not represent the views or endorsement of Six Degrees News. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of Six Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the Six Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive Six Do Brief via email.